it's not fair. I have a feeling, boys and girls, you have heard this said many times, whether at home or at school. Um, there are two big words we are going to learn about today. Justice and righteousness. Okay, let's start by praying. Our Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you uh, today. Thank you for this time. We pray you bless our time. In Jesus' name, amen. So I greet you all, boys and girls. I thank you that we can talk uh, about God's word. Um, today we are going to start a journey. I think we'll have three lessons on what we call minor prophets. Today we're starting with Amos. Uh, that's in Amos chapter 5. That's the whole chapter. I'm not going to read it, but I just want you to know it's Amos chapter 5, the whole chapter, and then chapter 9 from 11 to 15. I'll choose scriptures which I'm going to read. But let me introduce this to you. Um, Amos was a prophet. Now, these guys uh, would reveal, talk about the nature of God to other people. So they would understand what God was like and what he wanted and they would bring that to other people. So they would make people know the laws of God at the time um, and they would challenge people and tell people that they needed to repent and come back to God. Because the children of Israel, as you will see in this, they would disobey and worship other gods and do all sorts of things. But these prophets like Amos would challenge them and say, come back to God. Um, and they would tell people to worship God truthfully. So in sincerity, that we should worship God truthfully. Uh, and they would warn them of what will happen if they didn't do that, of the divine judgment that there is going to be this is going to happen if you don't. Now, some of the things they did at the time were like foretelling, like predicting the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ at that time. So that's what these prophets were supposed to be doing and what they were doing. Now, in this story of Amos, there are two kingdoms. There's what is called the Northern Kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom, Judah. During the time of Amos, there was peace. And if you were in business, the business was booming. It was doing so well. But inside, there was lots of bad things happening. People were sinning against God. They were just doing all kinds of bad things. Now, Amos was from Judah, but he was sent to go uh, to the northern kingdom of Israel by God to go and uh, do what God wanted him there. He saw injustice. Now, boys and girls, when I started, I said it's unfair. Um, injustice is an action against someone that is unfair. So if you take a scale, uh, like what you can see right now, it's not balanced properly. If you go to courts, uh, you see a scale like this. That's where the judges uh, try and bring justice. Now, boys and girls, Amos saw a lot of injustice. People were involved in materialism so liking things instead of god they were looking after themselves and they were evil at the time if you read the portion of scripture i told you they were just doing really bad things and they were not living according to god's standards and the bible even talks about they were abusing that is doing bad things to the poor 
uh, they would get them into all kinds of debts and uh, they would not allow them to be able to pay because they would create, make it very difficult. So in short, there was evil, unrighteousness, things that were not right happening at that uh, during Amos' time. So Amos is sent by God to this northern kingdom of Israel. And his job, his duty was to tell people to repent and come back to God and stop their evil ways and consider other people. Now, boys and girls, that's the same message today. Uh, it may not be Amos uh, saying the message to you. Um, it may be uncles and aunties and moms and dads uh, telling you that stop what you're doing. It's not right. Come back to God. Believe in Jesus Christ. So we need to mend our ways. We need to change. We need to I told you some weeks ago, we need to run away from sin. Because the Bible is very clear, boys and girls, the wages of sin is death. The wages of unrighteousness, not doing the right things, is death. The wages of injustice, treating other boys and girls the wrong way, is death. You know, God does not want that. There is no one under the sun. Every boy and girl that you see, they may not look like you. They may have different skin color. They may be short. They may be whatever. But what I want you to know, boys and girls, every one of those boys and girls, including you, are special before God. We were created in his image. And he wants everyone to be treated right. Not unjustly. Not to say, ah, I've got lots of money. So I'm going to look down on the poor uh, person who I go to school with. Or oh, you treat them badly. You don't take care. You don't respect them. Because you think you have money or you think you are more pretty or beautiful or whatever it is. So you can treat other people bad. Those are the things God does not want. And he's not happy with us, boys and girls, if we treat other people badly. So he wants us to do the right things. He wants us to treat other people well. So here, let's just jump into scripture. I will read just a few of them and I will just tell you. Uh, in Amos chapter 5 verse 7 says, these are those who turn justice into bitterness and cast righteousness to the ground. So they are not just, they do bad things. If you go to Amos chapter um, 5 verse 10 to 15, there are those who hate and one who uphold justice in court and detest the one who tells the truth. You see, boys and girls, that's what, that, was, that is what was happening at the time. You levy straw tax on the poor and impose tax on their grain. Therefore, though you have built some mansions, you will not live in them. See, that's what God is saying. Because you are ill-treating the poor, other people. You may have nice things, but you're not going to enjoy them. You may have planted lavish vineyards. You will not drink their wine. If you go to verse 14, it says, Seek good, not evil, that you may live. Then the Lord God Almighty will be with you, just as you say he is. Hate evil. Love good. Maintain justice in the courts. Perhaps the Lord Almighty will have mercy on the remnant of Joseph. Boys and girls, that's what Amos was challenging people at the time. 
that they should hate evil. Even today, boys and girls, let's run away from sin. Let's hate evil. Let's desire to do the right thing. Let's be those who do righteousness, who want to do good, who want to see justice. You are treating other people properly. Amos 5, 21 to 24. I hate all your show and pretense. The hypocrisy of your religious festival and solemn assembly. So Amos is telling people that, yeah, I will not accept your burnt offerings and grain. At that time, that's how they were worshipping God, boys and girls. Away with your noisy hymns of praise. I will not listen to the music of your harps. Instead, I want to see the mighty flood of justice and endless river of righteous, righteous living. Boys and girls, it's good to go to church. It's good to hide God's word in our heart and memorize scripture. It's good to sing songs. But if that's all we do, if our Going to church, reading the Bible, calling ourselves Christian does not show in the way we behave in treating other people, in running away from sin, in loving Jesus with all our heart. God is not happy with us. God is not happy with us. He does not want. I'll tell you what some of the things we can do to show that we want to see justice happening to see righteousness happening, also that happening in our lives. Um, James 1, 26 to 27 says, if you claim to be religious, so if you claim to be a Christian, but you don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion, that's a true Christian, in the sight of God, the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the, cor the world corrupt you. So what is it that you can show, do, that you want to see justice? You know, when children don't have their moms or dads, that's a bad situation. During Amos' time, they ignored those people. What are we doing today, boys and girls? Um, I want to challenge you. I've been challenging all this time that there are needy children around us. Boys and girls, let's remember them. Don't forget. Ask mom or dad that what is it that I can do to help other children who need help? There are many. There are orphans. There are those who have no money to go to school. There are those who have no food. Boys and girls, we can do something about that. Um, then there's a very nice scripture. That's James 2, 14 to 18. It says, What good is it, dear brothers and sisters? So what good is it, boys and girls, if you, if you say, have faith but don't show it by your actions. Can that kind of faith save anyone? So we want to see people come to know Jesus. We want to see people run away from sin. It's not enough, boys and girls, when we can help them to just say, have faith and not do something about it. Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say, goodbye. <clears throat> And have a good day. Stay warm and eat well. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? That's the Bible, boys and girls. In James chapter 2, verse 14 to 18. So, so you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds. It is dead. And useless. So you may say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. And you see people in need and you do nothing about it. Boys and girls, that's not what Christians do. So today, 
we can stand there, I can stand there like Amos and challenge you and say, repent, change your ways, okay? Make sure you see justice happening. Those who are not being treated well, you as a Christian speak out and say, what we are doing is not right. Let us treat everyone like it is the creation of God, that they were made in the image of God. If there's unrighteousness, boys and girls, let's start challenging people, starting by you. Live right. Show that you are a Christian. Now, someone may argue, some people may have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. That is Christian boys and girls. You know, the, the memory verse, Hosea 12 verse 6 says, But you must return to your God. Maintain love and justice and wait for your God always. So that's the challenge I want to leave with you today, boys and girls. There's lots of injustice. There's lots of unfairness happening around us. But because we've believed in Jesus Christ, let's show what Christians behave like. Let's show what it is to live right, righteousness, okay? That's what will make people say, no, I want to be like that boy. I want to be like that girl because they can see a difference in the way you treat other people, in the way you live. Amos at that time was challenging those people, even when they were doing well in business and whatever, but there was something wrong with their hearts. They were far from God. Today, boys and girls, the only way to come back to God is to be connected to Jesus, is to make things right, is to repent and say, Lord, help me by your spirit to live right, to treat other people the way you want them treated. Remember, Jesus said, whatever you did to any of these, you did it to me. Remember that? So let's treat other people well. Let's treat them justly. Let's um, live right. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the boys and girls. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you were treated unjustly. And you went to the cross. You died for every one of us. That today we can be said not guilty because of what you did on the cross. So I pray for the boys and girls that, Lord, they will live right. They will treat others justly. They will treat others well. They will speak well of others in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.